looking for a tissue paper texture technique tutorial? Well, I'm glad you're here because today I'm going to show you a super easy and fun way to add depth and texture to your journal pages. And stick around till the end because I have a silk flower tip for you and a pretty thrift store find that was only 20 cents. Here we go, y'all. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Melissa. Welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. Today I am working in my new Easter Traveler's Notebook insert. It's a B6, but it also comes in standard size. And I'm at the bottom of each one of these pages is a journaling prompt about the great exchange, which is what Jesus exchanged from his life for our life on the cross. And I'm working on his strength for my weakness page. And I'm tucking in a, a page wrap there. If you're not familiar with my page wraps, they're really fun. They wrap around the pages of your insert and, and you can use them for journaling. You can layer them up here. I've got two that I'm layering up. And you can also decorate them. That's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna show you how to create a little mini pocket. And what I'm using are pieces of ephemera from my ephemera kit. And I, I love this little bird and I thought he would make the perfect pocket for some of my ephemera cards. And I'm gonna journal on the back of these. So for our technique that we are doing today, tissue paper texture technique, I'm just using some scraps as you can see here from leftover from cutting out my page wraps. So I decide I wanna make a couple of little pockets and I'm just using the scraps. And for this technique, all you need is a somewhat solid base. So you could use junk mail, you could use cardstock, anything that you have that's gonna hold up to the tissue paper. And You'll see what I mean by that in just a minute. So I'm using the scraps that I've printed and I actually use a matte uh, photo paper, double-sided matte photo paper when I print uh, instead of cardstock. And you can see in some of my other tutorials, I explain a little bit more about that. And I'm just checking to see what I might like to put in these little pockets before I start on the tutorial and making sure that they fit and lining them up with the ephemera. And so now we're gonna get to the tutorial. It's super easy and super fun. I'm using a piece of parchment paper here that uh, for a paint palette, and that's mostly because I couldn't find my paint palette, and some cheap acrylic paint that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby. It's called Ocean Green, and it is just the prettiest shade of blue and some tissue paper, leftover tissue paper, literally pulled out of the trash. My poor husband threw it away, and I don't know how many times in the last 20 years that poor man has thrown something away and heard me say, you're not throwing that away, are you? <laughs> because I say that a lot. So I rescued it, and now what I'm doing is just layering up some acrylic paint on my surface, on, on my substrate, which right now is a scrap, and you're just gonna take your tissue paper and you're just gonna press it into that paint. You're gonna wrinkle it up and create some fun texture and bumps and lumps. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. You're just trying to create texture. And so you're just going to press it down, press it together, squish it together just until you like the look of it. And then we're going to let it dry. Now it's probably better to let it dry before you trim the edges just to keep the paint off your scissors and keep it from getting messed up. But I tend to be a little impatient and so I wanted to just trim it right away but normally I would say press it down and then let it dry before you trim the edges and then you're gonna trim the edges of your tissue paper off and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make two of these for my pockets and I'm gonna let them dry Okay, so now we have two completely dry pockets with our tissue paper and our first layer of paint. We're gonna do our second layer. And you can use a contrasting color for this. That looks really pretty. Uh, a yellow would be pretty here or metallic. But I wanted to keep my same blue because I really liked how it was looking with the green and the pink pages. And so you're just gonna brush on a thin coat of paint uh, you, you can cover all of it, or if you're using a contrasting color, you could just cover some of it and let some of that blue show through. And then I'm going to sprinkle on some chunky hexagon shaped glitter, which really gives it a lot more depth and sparkle. And what you want to do is just press that into the paint. We're going to use the paint kind of to adhere it, and we're just going to press it in here. I'm trying to not get paint on my nail polish, which didn't really work, but that's what I was trying to do there. And then once it's completely dry, you can use your heat tool if you're not patient, or you can let it dry for about half an hour and it'll be nice and dry. And now you're ready to move on and create your pockets or 
you don't have to create pockets. You could do a whole page like this. You could do a, a fold out or a tip in in your Bible like this. There's a lot of ways that you could use this technique. Today we're doing pockets. So what I want to do is I want to sew these onto my page. And I talk about this a lot, but this is one of the reasons that I like to use a traveler's notebook style junk journal because I don't have to take so bind my pages in. And so when I'm doing something like this, I can take the page to my sewing machine, sew my pockets on, and I don't have to worry about trying to finagle the whole book under the sewing machine. So here I'm just adding some uh, painted papers to under the pocket to just layer it up a little bit. And I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and it's all sewn now. I've sewn my little bird pocket into onto the page wrap. And you can see the stitches on the front. This doesn't bother me. I love the texture of it. I'm going to cover some of that up with a flower. Um, but it just really doesn't bother me. I like the texture of it. And by using that painted paper under my pocket, you can see I've created essentially a double pocket. So I was using the card to show you that I've now, instead of two, I've got four pockets there by just adding that extra layer of painted paper. So now I'm just going to tuck my little bits and pieces of ephemera into my little birdie pocket. And these are all things that I'll write scriptures on or I'll write my journaling on. And that's what I use those for. I like to keep my journaling a little private and so that's why I like to use tuck-ins for that. For my little butterfly I thought it would be really pretty to have the string, the thread, just trailing off of him kind of just like butterfly trails in the air and so that's what I did with my variegated thread there and these are some more just little pieces of ephemera that I'm tucking into the pockets that I'm going to journal on. So I wanted to show you something about silk flowers. I get asked a lot how I use silk flowers on my pages. And basically what I do is you see here, there's this little part on the bottom. I just pull that off and I pull the center piece out and there's just a little bit of a stem there. And I just snip that off with my scissors so that I get kind of a flat button-like shape to use in the center of my flower. So I use my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher and I staple that on to the page. And sometimes I just leave it just like that because I like the way the staples look and it just looks pretty. But in this case, I really liked that pop of yellow that the center of the flower gave me. So I'm gonna use my Eileen's Clear Tacky Glue and put a little bit of that in the center of my flower over, right over the staple. And then I'm just gonna press my flower center right into that glue and let it dry. And it takes, oh, maybe five or 10 minutes. It doesn't take very long at all to dry. So to finish up my cup, I'm going to use some vintage seam binding that I found at the thrift store for 20 cents. I was pretty excited. It's the most gorgeous shade of green and perfect for a spring layout. And I'm gonna tie that right into my cup and tuck it into the pocket and it's ready for my journaling. And next week, we are going back to our junk journal. I've got more page ideas for you for your junk journal and more signature ideas. If you haven't subscribed, you might want to subscribe so you don't miss anything. And I'll see you next time here on Pink Paper Peppermints.